Hey everyone, I'm Kurt. I'm Luke. Here we are. This is the breakdown. Yes, it is. <laughs> Man, wow. Here we are. This is the breakdown. Breaking down a message and a book that I, I told this to Pastor Daniel on Monday. I just said it to you before we yep. got on the mic. Many pastors don't teach or preach from two books in the Bible. They, mm-hmm. they will typically avoid two. Now, last year we really got into one, not all of it, but Pastor Zach brought us into Revelation. And uh, many pastors won't preach from Job. And uh, it really, it's good. It's refreshing to hear somebody actually dive in. And it's challenging across the board to process what's going on with Job and to even look at it as a further picture, a type, a shadow of Christ, yeah. and even a picture type shadow of our own walk of suffering. So I just, uh, I really think, you know, it's a big hill to climb when you go to it especially when you're tackling it in one message yes yes there's there's a whole lot there um and if if you haven't read the book of job i encourage you to read it absolutely Uh, even though uh i've heard a lot of people when they get to the book of job in their reading plans it's like i just want to get through this quick yeah no Uh, (laughs) no soak it in baby well, it's kind of like how we approach suffering too. It's like, yes. God, God, I'm suffering right now. Can you please help me learn this lesson? There's a yeah. lesson here, right? So help me learn the lesson quick yeah. so we can get through it. Can we just get I through mean, this? at least that's, you know, that, that's, that's always been my approach. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm here. What do I have to learn so I can get out of it? I understand. I totally understand. So I just want to say props to Pastor Daniel for biting off this big message. And really, he shared it. He felt and sensed from the Lord that he was supposed to bring this word to the church at the start of this year. And so he went to Pastor Zach. It wasn't it wasn't a his prison Sunday. That'll be coming up. But he went to Pastor Zach and said, I've got this word. I've mm-hmm. got to bring it. So when when that happens, we have to all just kind of take pause and say, Lord, what is it about this word that you were, you know, really impressing upon Daniel to bring yeah. that we need to receive from? So mm-hmm. Uh, interesting you bring up just like glossing through or just trying to make it through the book of Job. Uh, I totally understand that. Sometimes I feel that way when I get to Leviticus, you know, it's yeah. like there's a lot of law here. Mm-hmm. Can we just get through this? But God is in the details. Right. He's in these little details. And we heard and saw some nuances on Sunday. But uh, re- we're going to tackle this and get yeah. into it. And I think a big part of it, too, is Satan really wants to keep us in the dark about suffering. Yes. Um. Because there is so much um, that we learn in suffering and a strengthening, and we find out who we are in Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, but Satan doesn't want us to um, to learn that yeah. because he would rather keep us in fear. And I think going into this discussion, it's remembering how does Satan deal with us? How does mm-hmm. he deal with people? He deals with lies and he deals with fear. Yeah. Um, and God deals with truth and love. Mm-hmm. So those things are are pitted against each other. Yeah. And so as believers, it's important to remember that we walk in truth and we walk in love. Mm-hmm. That's so good, Luke. And, and part of what's important, and Pastor Daniel took some time to actually explain it, but this is really important. When you approach the book of Job, you, excuse me, you need to understand that you're reading an earthly experience and you're reading a heavenly experience. Yeah. And you have to make that jump because we have... The, the foreknowledge and the insight that Job actually didn't have. Yes. And yep. if, if Job is the one who recorded the book, that information was not provided until the end. Right. So this is insight, the heavenly insight about Satan trying to come and do these things and challenge the father that was not known to Job. Right. He didn't know these things when he was going through it. And so his whole argument is, bring me God. Let mm-hmm. God, because I know that I'm righteous. Bring me God. And if we go to court, I know that I'll be able to stand. And he, he, we, we tend to think, and, and we deal with this a lot in some of our classes at School of the Spirit, but we tend to think that everything good and bad is a direct result of God and what he is doing and trying to accomplish in life. And what, we, what I love about some of the first chapter of Job is that you can clearly see John 10, 10 in the reality that it is the thief who comes to steal, kill and destroy. Yep. And so we have to marry into this reality of Job and the reality of suffering. Right. We must marry into that 
a New Testament reality and theology. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's the super cool thing. Yeah. Because you were touching on how Job didn't have the full picture yeah. of what was going on in heaven. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, he didn't have the full picture of anything. Mm-hmm. He didn't have the picture of Jesus. Right? Oh, this is good. This Jesus, is good. Jesus hadn't come yet. This is good. Um, we have all of that. I know. And that is something else that I think Satan really tries to keep us in the dark about. Mm. We have the full counsel of scripture. Mm. We have this this picture. Yeah. We know um, like God has, the, the canon is closed. Mm-hmm. There's no more books being added to the Bible. So God is saying that this is the finished product. So yeah. study that. And then even beyond that, like God is bigger. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, because when God does show up, to to job Mm -hmm. he says um this in 38 it says like then the lord spoke to job out of the storm he said who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge Mm -hmm. right so the lesson in this is like we really have to submit our ways to the lord yeah and we but we have his full word we do we do and that's the beautiful part about it here i love that you're teasing this out um, Job, not only did he not have full counsel and the full word, neither did he have the Holy Spirit residing right. inside of him. Right. We have to understand when we're reading Old Covenant truths and realities that that Holy Spirit had not yet been released. Right. What Adam had in the garden when God breathed into him mm-hmm. the breath, the spirit of life, okay, that that was dead mm-hmm. prior to Christ's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, and, and the Holy Spirit came back. So There was a lot that Job didn't have in terms of the picture and the reality and understanding. And in fact, Job says it in Job 42. He says, ah, you know, I had spoke of things that I did not know. I did not know. Yeah. And and part of my favorite thing, there's so much I want to get into Mm -hmm. here because this is really good. I, too, I'm going to acknowledge I, too, used to run past the book of Job. I, too. And then I hit a suffering season in my life, which almost seemed like it never ended. Right. And I actually found comfort. Yes. In Job. Mm -hmm. I actually found comfort because you see the whole redemptive process. You see that the Lord never leaves him. You know, it even says that in all these things, Job did not curse God, nor did he sin. And yet there are times that he's challenging what's happening to him. And it's very comforting for us to say, okay, God is not going to leave me. He's not going Mm -hmm. to forsake me. But I will tell you, Luke, there is something about God when he shows up in the world, when he says, you stand up like a man and see if you can answer me. I'm like, oh boy, yeah, it's real. No, for real. And I, and I think, (laughs) but I think that that's something that we also need to take from this. And, and also in regards to our suffering is when we hold something up right in front of our face, it seems really big and it's blocking our view. Like I can put my hand in front of my face and I can't see you. Yeah. Right. Because I'm holding that. That's all I see. But if I hold my hand out and I, look at it in comparison to you, you're still bigger than my hand. Mm. And it's like that with our our suffering or our life, or even sometimes we can apply this to blessings too. Like sometimes sure. we hold up the things in our life so in front of our face yeah. that we miss the grandeur and the greatness and the sovereignty of God in all things in our life. Mm-hmm. And we're not supposed to be looking at these things. We're supposed to look at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. And when, when we do that, it makes it easier for us to navigate mm-hmm. uh, the good and the, the, the difficult in our life. Yeah. There's a lot that's woven into Job. I'm, I'm glad you're saying that. There's a lot that's woven into Job. And for the believer on this side of the cross, it actually should make us rejoice in the fact that we have a Savior. We actually have experience. Like, Sometimes we think, if I could just go back and be Moses, David, and Elijah, and I could hear the voice of God in a whirlwind or see the power of God, then I would have such a deep deep relationship. We have far better. We have better promises fulfilled in our lives. We have access to the divine nature Mm -hmm. in our lives through the Spirit of God. And this reality and this picture, as believers reading through Job, it should cause us to really rejoice with what God right. has done right. through the salvation Amen. of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Because, you know, the, the Paul says, like, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. Yes. That had not yet happened for no. Job. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So we have something that Job did not have. So as we learn through the life of Job and yeah. the situation of Job, we have to also understand where we are now in Christ under the new covenant. And Luke, this is really important. Again, we teach it in our classes. 
every time we read from the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, we must do so through the lens of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Jesus has to be the lens through which we're reading everything because it makes all sense. When we read the scriptures with the Holy Spirit, he illuminates mm-hmm. even these types and these shadows of Christ to come. Yes. Because he is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Right. So God already had this whole thing set up. <laughs> well, and that's where, you know, again, our smallness, yeah. <laughs> our finiteness is coming into play is we are bounded by space, time, uh, you know, all the dimensions of our world yeah. that are created by God. And God is outside of those mm-hmm. things. So he's outside of time. He's outside of all these, all of these circumstances. So we are talking about things that even still we do not fully yet understand how that all works. Mm-hmm. But that is what is to give us strength and courage and and propel us forward is, yeah. wow, like I am praying and I have relationship there you go. with the supernatural, with beyond this time and space. Yes. Because in Christ, we're seated in heavenly places. That's one of my favorite wor- verses. Know it is. You know, yes, I know, it you know? Ephesians 1. <laughs> because that's, because that's, that's our reality. It is. So when I live from that reality, now everything is like, it's kind of okay. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, okay, I'm not, I am here, but I am, in reality, I am not here. I am going somewhere. That's right. We, we have to, did I cut you off no, there? Okay. No, This is really good. You know, you read Hebrews 12 and Hebrews 12 um, the writer of Hebrews 12 harkens back to a proverb that says, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, for the Lord chastens and corrects those whom he loves, and he scourges every son whom he brings close to him. So what we have to understand is that while suffering and pain and discipline are not the desire of our lives, they will produce a peaceable fruit of harvest. Right. There is something to be produced. And, and I just want to separate this, Luke, because... There is a discipline from the Lord. There is suffering just by living in a fallen yep. world. And it's really important because sometimes we're just throwing it all up and we're looking at God and we're saying, right. God, you're the reason for all this in my life. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, Jesus said in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Right. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Mm-hmm. So in Christ, there are going to be things that God will use circumstances of our lives to actually produce a discipline. And correction. Well, and that's how God always wins. Yes. He's always going to win. It doesn't matter what Satan does. Good word. God is going to win in my life. Mm. And that's what's supposed to propel us forward. If we're submitted to him. If yeah. we're Because what, what happens well, is- Well, we can miss, I think we can miss the divine perspective. Yeah. If we're not submitting, if we're not looking for it. And, and Pastor Daniel tapped into that. Yeah. Well, well, Jesus goes on to say, hey, Peter- Satan is asked to sift you mm-hmm. like wheat. I have prayed for you. And afterwards, when you've, been strength, when, when you've been restored, strengthen the brethren. Yep. And so there is this picture of we are all many times going through this sifting process. And part of it reveals to us where we actually are and how much more we still need right. that Savior to step in. God is long-suffering. He's with us in that process of pain and sifting. And when we come to our senses yeah. many a times, many times, I keep saying many a times, when we come to our senses. <laughs> many a time. <laughs> well, it is many a time. Okay. <laughs> it must be all that, uh, must be all the British talk from our Christmas carol that our kids are putting on many a time. <laughs> but just submitting to the process. And, you know, bro, even if we blow it, yep. you see God show up here to Job and he's like, who is this? Mm-hmm. Who, who are you? And let me just ask you real quick, where were you? when I was framing the universe. Right. Bro, I'm not going to be so arrogant to sit here and say that there have not been times that I am shaking my fist at heaven. Now, I've grown, but there have been seasons in my life where I'm saying, God, where are you? Yeah. God, you've forsaken me. Mm-hmm. God, I didn't do anything to deserve this. Mm-hmm. And every single time I have found that the Lord is patient with me yep. and he brings me to this place that's a beautiful repentance, much like Job, it's like I was speaking about things that I didn't know. God, yeah. And I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And, and, and as a result, God restores and redeems this time of brokenness. Yep. Yep. And, and I think that it's also important to remember that we don't have to feel guilty when we say those things. Yeah. Like, God, why have you forsaken me? Mm. Or, um, you know, like my, my enemies are succeeding, but I, I'm being crushed. Mm. Um, because I don't think that that's 
I don't think that's the heart of the father to he wouldn't want us to not say that like it, part of it there is like a vulnerability piece yes. and being open about this is what I'm feeling yeah and we see that in the Psalms too yeah but the 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 part where it's it becomes unhealthy is when we don't then allow God to speak back to us correct Luke Correct. Because there's something in in us that's like, I kind of like this victim yes. posture. Yes. Because it's like, wow, everything's against me. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like the star of my own tragedy. Yeah. But really the star of my story is supposed to be God. So mm. now, that, now that I've gotten it out, God, what do you remind me of, of the truth? Amen. So good. This is awesome. I want to, there's a, there's a point in particular that I want to touch on. I'm sure we have a few points to dialogue about, but I do want to say this. I had mentioned the discipline, the correction, and then suffering. And one of the things that Paul brings us, Paul with his full revelation of Christ and the New Testament realities, he says it like this. He says, my intended purpose in life is that I may know him who is Christ Mm -hmm. and that I may be acquainted with the fellowship of his sufferings. Yeah. So there's a reality to being a believer and understanding that Suffering will produce something in my life that won't be produced just mm-hmm. by coasting through. It doesn't mean that we're, and, and I've heard of others too, and I, and I do not encourage this at all. I've met some people who are like, come on, I'm ready. Give me, give me the suffering. Give me the challenge. <laughs> Listen, just by living, just by living, you don't need to welcome anything, ask for anything, just by living. <laughs> it's funny. You're making me remember uh, one of my friends when he had uh, become a, a, he was like a, a, new, a, a newer Christian. And he very early tapped into how suffering um, produces, uh, you know, a, a perseverance yeah. and, 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 and good character in us. Yeah. So he said, um, like, I was, he's like, yeah, I just, he's like, I just, I just need to suffer more. And in my head, I, I didn't say this to him because I was like, that's, it wasn't what he needed at that yeah. point. But I, in my head, I was like, oh, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Like, it's going to come. It's, you know? it's <laughs> coming. <laughs> It's coming. And we think about, we right. think about the word from, you know, Colin McNulty at the, at yes. the first part of the year. Yes. If you're either in a trial, you've come from a trial or you're going into a trial. Yep. It, it's coming. It's coming. But God will win. Yes. And that's, you know, because we, we enter into the story where um, Joe, uh, not Joe, uh, God is in heaven mm-hmm. and the throne room and then Satan goes in there. Yeah. And God brings up Job. He's like, have you considered Job? Mm-hmm. You know, I have a whole lot of New Testament theology on that that I'm not going to share here, but I do share it in some of my classes. And I talked to Pastor Daniel about it, too. Um, And it's a good thing. It's a good thing to kind of tussle and challenge through these things in the Word and to realize that, like Job, we don't have a full picture. Mm -hmm. Paul communicates it in 1 Corinthians 13. Right now, we're seeing dimly through a glass, okay? We know in part and we prophesy in part. And it is in that part process and posture that we have to find ourselves saying, Lord, I will trust you. Lord, I will trust you. And, you know, I'm just thinking about this word that's been woven for me personally through this year. And it's all about this invitation to intimacy, like we talked about last week, and this friendship. And Luke, as I was sitting there at, on the message, at the message on Sunday, all I kept thinking was, it is way easier to go through suffering when you know your best friend is by your side. Amen. And Jesus is my best friend. Mm-hmm. He is the one. And, and that I feel as I was mapping out and just going through the message and processing it all, I was understanding, you know what? I understand now, Lord, why you're inviting us to a greater place of friendship and relationship and intimacy, because trials are here. These right. challenges are here and more are coming. And we have to have such a deep connection with you. Yep. Yep. Well, and that's how we grow in our faith, yeah. because it takes faith mm. for us to pause and look beyond what we see and what we're experiencing and walking in now what we know from the truth that okay the truth is in Christ the holy spirit now lives inside of me yes and he's my comforter and my counselor so by faith i am now going to go to him but that can be really hard because when we're in a physical time of suffering we very naturally as physical beings want a physical solution. Mm. But God's word tells us that we have something even greater than that. It's the supernatural, it's the divine living inside of us. Mm-hmm. But that takes faith. It takes faith to take your eyes off of your physical situation 
and and look to your heavenly father to the holy spirit to now counsel you from this place where it's like well i can't see you Mm -hmm. but he promises as pastor zach has been talking about the last couple weeks it's he speaks to us so all these these messages like you might feel like Job, this Job message came out of nowhere. No, it taps it, into it really does. what we've been journeying in as a church over the last couple of weeks. Because mm-hmm. what's the application of hearing his voice? It's a very practical application is when we're in these difficult times of suffering. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's the one who, who wants to lead us not only to that green pasture land, mm-hmm. but also lead us at a time where there's a drought or there's a famine. He wants yeah. to lead us in those moments too. And that's the picture is he's lead. He understands that there is a drought in your life and you're feeling like there isn't a uh, provision for you, but he's, he's going to provide for you and he's leading you to provision. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we have, you know, really about 10 minutes in the rest of our dialogue here. And I know it's like, we feel in the same way Pastor yeah. Daniel was on Sunday. So there's three things that I really feel that I want to approach. And then we can talk about anything else. But I want to just really just tap into Job's friends and the theology and doctrine Mm. surrounding that, Job's wife, and then this picture that I would dare say Job's self-righteousness, because I don't think that Job fully understood where it was that all these blessings and coverings were coming from. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until that was kind of removed that he became aware. Um, And so that's the thing is he kept, like me, he kept shaking his fist up at God and saying, if if I could just take you to court, Mm -hmm. you know, would that God was a man that I could take him to court? Because I know that 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 my case would stand. And it's just this, like you said, I think your illustration is perfect. I can put the hand in front of your face. And I I had heard a pastor explain that similarly. So whatever is in front of us, whatever is, yeah, it can be, it can be like that bigger picture. But Job's friends, you know, they represent and we just had this dialogue with Dave, our media guy, before we got on the mic. Job's friends, their their presentation to Job. I I will say this. In all the teaching I've ever heard on Job, I love Pastor Daniel's line um, that comes out of, it's either Job 2 or 3, where his friends just sat with him for the mm-hmm. first seven days and said nothing. Yep. And he said, that was their golden hour. And I'm like, yes, yeah. that was their golden hour. Sometimes you just need a friend to sit mm-hmm. by your side. But what happens is, this happens to all of us. We start to get weary that that person's situation is not getting better. And now we're starting to use either deductive logic, maybe our own Bible study and understanding. Cause and effect. It's like, well, there's got to be a reason. Yes. Yeah. And even this is what Pastor Daniel was saying. Theology and doctrine plays a role. The, The ideas and beliefs about God and his interaction with his creation and the teachings that we may have adopted or heard in previous experiences, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, when any one of us who has suffered loss and it seems to be an abrupt loss, it seems to be like there's not an equation there, like nothing was expected. Our minds immediately go to either some sin with that person or some sin in the people that were related to them. Right. And in fact, Jesus's disciples said this to him when Jesus found the man and his disciples said, okay, God, okay, Jesus, who sinned, him or his parents? Mm -hmm. We've always been thinking this way. What did Jesus say? Neither. Neither. Yeah. But that the glory of God might be revealed. Mm -hmm. And so there's a picture here where if we don't fully understand what's going on in somebody's situation, in somebody's life, um, we really are best to keep our mouths shut and not try to say things that would either tear that person down in their hour of trial or say things that are against God's character and nature, because that's ultimately what's happening here. Right. And, and I get, and again, I think that's um, the importance of relying on the Holy Spirit to give us the words to speak to people in that time, but understanding that, you know, what they really need is God. I'm here as a, as a support. Yeah. Um, and just our presence and our continued presence. I think sometimes like in those times where you don't have words. Yeah. You can reflect the heart of God who never leaves. That's so good. Or forsakes. It's like, I don't have the words, but I can reflect that aspect of the character character of God where I'm not going to leave. Yeah. I can be here with you. Yes. And that's what I'm saying. I thought what Pastor Daniel communicated, that was their golden hour when they were just there with their friend. I mean, and there's so much woven into that, even how at the end, the Lord accepts Job by Job's sacrifice for his friends. You know, just mm-hmm. the, it's just so good. It's so good. And I just, I wanted to touch quickly on, yeah. on Job's wife. 
uh, because again, we had this dialogue with David a few moments ago. And really, you know, if you were a wife, I was kind of wondering sitting next to my wife, okay, how will you receive what's being communicated right now? And she was so funny. She actually had an additional joke to what to what Daniel was communicating. And I loved it. I'm like, okay, you're right on. But one of the things that I think many husbands try to communicate to their wives, and I, I'm going to really put my neck out there to try to communicate it now, is really the power that you have. It's one of the things that I've talked to Jennifer a lot about is when you say something, you have such a special place in my own heart and my own life that you have the ability to influence in ways like nobody else. And so it's really important for wives to understand. And this, it, it's not a bad thing. You know, it's important to understand that wives have that power to influence. Mm-hmm. And I, there have been several situations in my life and I've had this dialogue and I'm like, I will tell Jennifer, it's because what you say means so much to me. It means so much to me that, you know, I, I know that I'm called as the husband to lay down my life yep. for the bride, like Ephesians 5 talks about. So it's just understanding that power. Like, don't, if it, if, if it was a little coarse, like I, what I'm trying to mm-hmm. say is if on Sunday you received it, maybe a little bit more like sandpaper, like it was coarse, just realize the weight of your words and the power that it carries. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, because in marriage, you're supposed to have that oneness. Yeah. And, being a team. And when you look at the picture of Job and his wife, they're not. Mm. They're saying completely different things. Yep. Yep. And, you know, she's basically telling him, yeah, you're better off dead. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Even if that results in eternal punishment. Mm. I know. It's it's so crazy. Again, then you get the full picture. I'm just trying to flip over here to find it, but I'm not finding it right now. But you flip over all the way to the end Mm -hmm. where God restores her and her children as well. She gets more children, yep. you know? And so there is a restoration process. And and you actually see, you see the role of the priests here because Job represents the priesthood both to his household mm-hmm. as well as to his friends. And yeah, you, you, you see yeah. all this take place. Well, and I think that's important for us to also remember as believers is we are vessels of grace. Yes. So we bring grace where we go. Mm. And when we see people in our life that are not, walking with the Lord, we can pray to God on their behalf. Yeah. I mean, and, but to do that, again, you have to get your eyes off yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I do think that um, as believers, especially like in our, in our culture, I think we practice a very much like a, a more me-centric faith, uh, which sure. is important because yep. like God, the work of God does start in me, but that's the only part of the story. It's, yes. There's supposed to be an outworking. Yeah. And as you mature, you will look at yourself less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really cool that you're saying that because we tend to personalize. <clears throat> it's it's a twofold process, like yeah. you're saying. Oh, and we, you flip back and forth through that. You really do. We personalize the the passages in the New Testament writings, what Paul communicates in like Ephesians and Colossians, and all those are true. You know, but when it talk, talk talks about putting on the spiritual armor, he is. I think it has a personal application as well. But he is talking to a church. He's talking to a church and saying, hey, listen, you got to put on this armor. You need to have the mm-hmm. helmet of salvation, which is going to help with that mind of Christ. Yeah. You need to earnestly play, pray in the spirit. And this is not, while it is individual, we are a part of a collective whole. Yeah. And so it is important that I suit up daily so that I'm ready for my brothers and sisters who can suit up daily. And if my brother's shoe is untied, I'm going to kneel down right. and tie his shoe and help right. out. Yeah. It's really good. So what what else did you want to break down from this message? I had mentioned Job's self-righteousness, which may be me reading into it a little bit, but I, I want to just pick your brain with the last few minutes here. Anything else that you wanted to process on this message? Anything we should really communicate? Well, I think we should we should have to talk about that piece that Pastor Daniel felt uh, really compelled to bring. Yes. Uh, which was yes. about, you know, our our divisions. Yeah, that's uh, true. Because he, and, and this is a big lesson that we take away from Job, mm. um, is... God, impart to me your heart and your your truth. I have to submit my ideas, my will, my feelings, even about your truth. Yeah. To you. Yes. Um, because you there are different denominations. You talk about denominational division. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically how um like there's Baptists, mm-hmm. there's um, there's Pentecostals, there's all these different groups of Christians in the big C church mm-hmm. where 
if you look at their history, they were formed uh, usually by an emphasis on a certain aspect of theology. Correct. Of of a, a truth that is in scripture. Mm-hmm. Um, but while, now this isn't to say that everybody's right on everything. No, that's actually the heart is we need to be submitted to the work of God and, and, the, and, and the Holy Scripture, but walking with one another, understanding that we are all in a process of growth. Yes. Um, and we, are, we ought to be pursuing unity. Mm-hmm. You know, like Paul talks about, you know, like preserve, preserve you, the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That takes work because, yeah. again, we look at the work of like of Satan. Satan wants to divide. Mm. Now, God's going to win no matter what. Yeah. But when we work to to come and serve from this place of mutual submission to God and then to one another and what the Holy Spirit is saying, then there are there are less divisions. Now yeah. we don't compromise on truth, mm-hmm. so it's this, it's this fine line of like you can't say everything's right, right, or that um, everything goes. That's wrong. Yep. But again, where is my focus? If mm-hmm. our focus is on Jesus, we're going. We're we are going to be able to work with one another. Yeah, yeah. This this is really really weighty and important. So yeah. it, you know, denominations would represent that doctrinal belief. It's mm-hmm. it's our teaching and our understanding, and the theology is woven into the denominational belief, the 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 belief about God and His interaction with man, and that would determine how you see any situation, whether it's suffering yes. or blessing. Yes, and so. In these situations, you see if Job's friends represent, per se, a doctrinal belief, a denominational Mm -hmm. belief, then they're bringing that to Job as the filter. Hey, I've studied it out, and maybe it's this. This is the reason you're suffering, you know? And so the same is true with us. And there's a lot of different experiences that we have in life. And while we, we do have to endeavor to keep the spirit and the bond of peace, which is that place of perfection, that spirit of peace, um... We, we also can learn from one another. If I have friends who are a part of a different denomination, mm-hmm. you know, they, they may say, well, I don't fully believe that the, the Pentecost, the day of Pentecost experiences and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, I don't fully believe that all those gifts are still applicable today. Mm-hmm. Listen, I've had those conversations with people. I've talked about right. those things. And I am fine because of what the Lord has shown me over the course of my life. I'm fine standing in a worship session with a brother or sister yeah. who doesn't share that belief. Mm-hmm. And I'm not holding mine over their head. Right. And the expectation right. is they're not holding theirs right. over mine. Right. And there's something to be learned from one another. Exactly. exactly. And I, th- I think even you, we can even see this in a, in a church where it's like it's not a doctrinal difference. It's I think it's also a wiring difference. There you go. Um. You know, like if someone's wired, more wired as a, as a teacher, they are more into the truth of scripture. Everything mm. is going back to scripture and like the, the guidelines, whereas people who are more wired prophetically, like they, in some ways, they, it's not that they're not scriptural or that they devalue scripture. Um, it's just they have, they hear from, they're wired to hear from God in a way, not more natural, mm. right? Mm. So sometimes we take our individual walk with God, That's both good. right, both not sinful, right. but we're like, you're not right with God because you're not doing things exactly the way I do. It. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. Whereas that's not, that's not the healthy attitude. The healthy attitude is, okay, you do things differently. I need what you have. You need what I have. Yes. And in the Holy Spirit, we can impart those gifts to one another. Yes, absolutely. Right? And this is where when we become unified, we actually grow up together yes. and we we learn and are equipped from one another. Yeah. It's the whole reason why Jesus had 12 and those 12 multiplied. You have to work with other people. And it's, it's part of you realize even in this this first century of the birth of the church, you see the differences. I mean, these guys had to come together. It's mm-hmm. like Acts 15 or 16 to bring this whole Jerusalem council just to talk about whether or not circumcision was required for new believers. Right. So we have we have to understand there's so much about God that we don't fully know in this in, in this in part picture mm-hmm. that it's really, really important that we're not holding our beliefs. Right. 
so close to our heart that we're not willing to learn. We're exactly. not willing to be grown exactly. and stretched. And, and the things that are clear mm -hmm. are important. Yep. Right? So we understand we're all sinful. Yeah. We understand that we are saved through Jesus, through Jesus' death on the cross. And now we walk in freedom and in grace. Yes. So like we can't do anything good to earn our way in. Yep. Those are very, very clear. Mm -hmm. We understand that it is God's will that I be transformed and become like Jesus. Yes. And through his word, I am purified. I, be, I, am, I grow up into Christ. This is awesome. That's why you're a teacher, bro. You just hit the playback on that and read. Listen to that again. That was really good, Luke. That was a really good breakdown. That's awesome. There That's we go. That's very, very good. That's a great way to end our show today, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good to be here with you. And regardless of where you are, if you feel like you're in a time of suffering or you've just come out of a time of suffering and maybe your head is spinning, you know, and you're wondering, okay, what was all that about? You know, just seek the Lord on where you are. You don't have to have all the picture and understand, but what God desires is a closeness and an intimacy and that you know him. You know him in a very real and tangible way. So Luke, I would love for you to pray for sure. us today. Father, thank you uh, for your heart and your love for us. And we receive that love again today. Um, we pray that uh, we would love your truth, that we would desire above everything else to know your truth through your word and through the Holy Spirit living inside of us, uh, that we would be guided by your truth and, and walk in it um, so that when the storms come, we understand that our anchor is secure and you have the path laid out for us. And so we submit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, folks, I'm Kurt. And I'm Luke. That's the breakdown. We will be back next week. Give me a